So we have these two graphs that look pretty similar, y equals f of x and y is equal to g of x. And what they ask us to do is write a formula for the function g in terms of f. So let's think about how to do it. And like always, pause the video and see if you can work through it on your own. All right, well, what I like to do is I like to focus on this minimum point because I think that's a, that's a very easy thing to, to, to look at because both of them have that minimum point right over there. And so we can think about how do we shift f, at least especially this minimum point, how do we shift it to get to overlapping with g? Well, the first thing that might jump out at us is that we would want to shift to the left. And we'd want to shift to the left four. So let me do this in a... Let me do this in a new color. So I would want to shift to the left by four. So we have shifted to the left by four, or you could say we shifted by negative four. Either way, you could think about it. And then we need to shift down. So we need to shift, we need to go from y equals two to y is equal to negative five. So let me do that. So let's shift down. So we shift down by seven, or you could say we have a negative seven shift. So how do you express g of x if it's a version of f of x that shifted to the left by four and shifted down by seven? Or you could say it had a negative four horizontal shift and had a negative seven vertical shift. Well, one way to think about it is g of x, g of x is going to be equal to f of f, let me do it in a little darker color. It's going to be equal to f of x minus your horizontal shift. All right, horizontal shift. So x minus your horizontal shift plus your vertical shift. So plus your vertical, vertical shift. Well, what is our horizontal shift here? Well, we're shifting to the left, so it was a negative shift. So our horizontal shift is negative four. And what's our vertical shift? Well, we went down, so our vertical shift is negative seven. So it's negative seven. So there you have it. We get g of x, let me do it in that same color. We get g of x is equal to f of x minus negative four, or x plus four, and then we have plus negative seven, or you could just say minus seven. And we're done. And when I look at things like this, the, the negative seven is, is somewhat, is, is more intuitive to me, is that I shifted it down, it makes sense that I have a negative seven. But at first when you work on these, you say, hey wait, I shifted to the left, why is it a plus, why is it a plus four? And the way I think about it is, in order to get the same value out of the function, instead of inputting, so if you want to get the value of f of zero, you now have to put x equals negative four in. And then you get that same value. You still get to zero. So that's, I don't know if that helps or hurts in, in terms of your, your understanding, but it, it often helps to try out some different values for x and seeing how it actually does shift the function. And if you're just trying to get your head around this piece, the horizontal shift, I recommend you know, not even using this example. Use an example that only has a horizontal shift and it'll become a little bit more intuitive. And we, do, we have many videos that go into much more depth that explain that. But let's do another example of this. So here, we have, we have y is equal to g of x in purple and y is equal to f of x in blue. And they say given that f of x is equal to square root of, square root of x plus four minus two, write, a g, write an expression for g of x in terms of x. So first, let me just write an expression for g of x in terms of f of x. We can see, once again, it's just a shifted version of f of x. And remember, and I'll just write in general, so g of x, is going to be equal to f of x minus your horizontal shift plus your vertical shift, vertical shift. And so to go from f to g, what is your horizontal shift? Well, your horizontal shift is, if you take this point right over here, which, is, which should map to that point once we shift everything, your horizontal shift is two to the left. So, or you could say it's a negative two horizontal shift, so that should be negative two. And then what is our vertical shift? Well, our vertical shift is we move, we go from y equals negative two to y equals three. So we're shifting 
five up. So this is a vertical shift of positive five. So your vertical shift is five. So if we just wanted to write g of x in terms of f of x, like we just did in the previous example, it's, we could say g of x is going to be equal to f of x minus negative two, which is x plus two, and then we have plus five. But that's not what they asked us to do. They asked us to write, they, whoops, they asked us to write an expression for g of x in terms of x. And so here we're actually going to use the definition of f of x. So let me make it clear. We know that f of x, f of x is going to be equal to square root of x plus four minus two. So given that, given that, what is f of x plus two? Well, f of x plus two is going to be equal to everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with an x plus two. Square root of x plus two plus four minus two which is equal to the square root of x plus six minus two. Well, that's fair enough. That's just f of x plus two. Now what is f of x plus two plus five? So f of x plus two plus five is going to be this thing right over here plus five. So it's going to be equal to square root of x plus six minus two, and now we're going to add five. Let me do it in a different color. So plus five, so plus five. And so what we end up with is going to be square root of x plus six minus two plus five is going to be plus three. So that is equal to g of x. Just as a reminder, what did we do here? First I expressed g of x in terms of f of x. Where I said, hey, to get from f of x to g of x, I shift two to the left. Two to the left, it's a little counterintuitive that it's plus two makes it a shift of two to the left. If this was minus two, it would be a shift of two to the right. But like I just said in, in the previous example, it's good to try out some x's and to see why that makes sense. And then we shifted five up. So this was g of x in terms of f of x. But then they told us what f of x actually is in terms of x. So I said, okay, well, what is f of x plus two? f of x plus two, we substituted x plus two for x and we got this. And But g of x is f of x plus two plus five. So we took what we figured out f of x plus two is, and then we added five, and that's what g of x is. And then we are all done.